Hello, my name is Reverend Dr. May Elise Cannon. Today is Monday, August 26th. Today is day 325 since October 7th. In terms of um, what transpired over the weekend, Israel and Lebanon, uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon, traded some of the heaviest cross-border air attacks since, uh, well, in months, since October, after Israel launched what it called a preemptive strike against major Hezbollah um, areas in um, Hezbollah later said it fired its own barrage as retribution for Israel's killing of its senior commander, Fawad Shakur, in July. Both sides claimed victory and quickly said that um, escalations had been contained. Analysts say tensions could still escalate further, um, but for the time being, it seems things have settled a bit. Um, Hezbollah's leader, Hassan Nasrallah, Yesterday on Sunday said that the group had targeted Israeli military base Glilot near Tel Aviv and that if Hezbollah had succeeded in attacking the base, it would not seek further revenge for Shakur's assassination. If it turned out to have been a failure, Hezbollah still reserved the right to respond at a later date. That was according to the Associated Press. And the New York Times reported that Israel's military spokesperson said that Hezbollah's attack had failed to strike any bases that belong to the Israeli Defense Forces. Contrary to Hezbollah's claims, there have been no hits on IDF bases, not in the north and not in central Israel, according to Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari of the IDF. The U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken told Israeli leaders that Washington would consider preemptive action against Hezbollah justified, but warned against using the opportunity to hit a broader range of targets. That was according to the New York Times. Hamas yesterday said that it rejected new Israeli conditions that were put forward in Gaza related to ceasefire talks, casting further doubts on chance of a breakthrough in terms of those conversations. The key sticking point continues to be the Israeli military's presence at the Philadelphia quarter on the Egypt and Gaza border. That was reported by Reuters. And Israeli strikes across Gaza yesterday, Sunday, killed at least 20 people, according to Gaza civil defense authorities. This followed Israeli airstrikes on Saturday that health workers said killed at least three dozen Palestinians in South Gaza. That was according to both the Associated Press and the New York Times. And we did receive news that a 10-month-old baby in Gaza has been partially paralyzed after contracting polio, according to the United Nations, marking the first case of polio that has happened in 25 years. This is the type 2 polio virus. It was detected in samples collected from wastewater in June. Um, there have been preparations for the possibility of a vaccine, but it's not known how that could be distributed because there has been such an inability for consistent humanitarian access in past weeks and months. An Israeli Air Force drone destroyed rocket launchers in Han Yunus in Gaza that fired at the Tel Aviv suburb of Rishon Lezion last night, according to the IDF, saying that the launchers were set up close to a school compound. And UN humanitarian aid operations in Gaza stopped today, Monday, after Israel issued new evacuation orders again for Deir al in the central Gaza Strip. Those evacuation orders happened late last night. Late on Sunday, a senior UN official told Reuters were unable to deliver today with all of the conditions that were in. The death toll in Gaza, as most recent reports, are 40,435 Palestinians killed and at least 93,534 wounded since October 7th. In the West Bank, the Palestinian Health Ministry reported that Iyad Abed al-Nashar, 46 years old, was killed by the Israeli Defense Forces south of the city of Hebron, and an explosive device blew up alongside of an Israeli civilian bus near the village of Mara Rabah on Sunday evening, damaging the vehicle, but there were no casualties, the IDF reported. All of that happened in the West Bank. Ceasefire negotiations have focused now on how to monitor the Philadelphia corridor, which again runs between the border between Gaza, Gaza and Egypt. Those conversations are still taking place in Cairo. Egypt reiterated it will not accept any Israeli military presence on the Rafah border crossing or along the Philadelphia corridor. 
And Egypt also denies that any tunnels run along its border with Gaza could be used for smuggling, including by Hamas, a source involved in the talks, told Haaretz, the Israeli newspaper, adding that the tunnels recently located by the IDF on the Gaza side of the border were blocked by Egypt six years ago as a part of an effort to stop smuggling. Egypt's claim contradicts not only Netanyahu's assessment, but also those of senior Israeli officials about Hamas's activity in the area. There's always a possibility that smuggling is taking place through tunnels that neither Egypt nor Israel know about, a source said. But Netanyahu's demand for a permanent presence in the quarter under these circumstances raises questions. The source added that all arms found in Gaza in recent months appear to have been manufactured inside of Gaza or smuggled through the Rafah border crossing or by other means, which may indicate that Israel underestimated Hamas's ability to manufacture its own ammunition prior to October 7th. On Sunday, Israeli sources involved in the talks said that contrary to media reports, Netanyahu has softened his position on the Philadelphia quarter and that he still insists Israel remains in control of and deployed along the entire quarter. Israel's far-right national security minister, Itamar Ben-Gavir, told Army Radio that there's a new policy that does not limit Jewish prayer on the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound, also known as the Temple Mount, adding that if I was able to do anything I wanted on the Temple Mount, the flag of Israel would have been raised there long ago. He also said he would establish a synagogue at the Temple Mount if he could. And in response, Netanyahu's office said there's no change in the status quo, which prohibits Jewish prayer at the site. In response to Ben Gavir's comments, Hamas called on Palestinians and Arab Israelis to protest Jewish presence at the Al-Aqsa Mosque and to increase the struggle against the occupation in the West Bank, adding that continuing the provocation tours on a daily basis is a policy that pours fuel on the fire and will be met with a sharp reaction from the Palestinian people. Britain's attorney general has intervened in the foreign office's decision on whether or not to ban UK arms sales to Israel. Sources say that Richard Hermer told officials he will not approve a decision to ban some weapon sales until they can definitively say which could be used to break international humanitarian law, The Guardian reported. And Iran does not seek to increase Middle East tensions, the country's foreign minister, Abbas Arachi, told his Italian counterpart, adding that its response to the killing of Hamas chief Ismail Hanania in Tehran would be, quote, definite and calculated, but also Iran is not afraid of it, according to Reuters. Qatar's Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed Al Thani met with Arachi in Tehran following the summit in Cairo to discuss the hostage release and ceasefire deal. The Greek flag tanker Sunyan has been fired upon uh, has been on fire since August 23rd after it was attacked by Yemen's Houthis with no obvious signs of an oil spill, EU Red Sea naval missions said in a post on X today, on Monday. That was reported in Reuters. That's a summary of where things stand right now. Um, conversations are continuing in Cairo. We'll continue in our collective efforts, uh, calling for a comprehensive and permanent ceasefire, immediate and adequate humanitarian assistance into Gaza, that we might have a breakthrough in the days ahead. May it be so as we continue in our efforts towards peace. Amen.